a very good evening to everyone welcome to global online and here we are back with our nta ugc net paper 1 december 2023 cycle as you all are aware that we are doing revision series that is in the form of you know mcqs where and we are done with we are doing the unit that is called as people development and environment prior to this we have completed units like teaching aptitude uh, research aptitude communication higher education system this is the first cycle in the second cycle we will be doing the questions for 2022 and 2023 so make sure that you are staying tuned with the channel uh, watching the videos preparing yourself best and definitely these all practice will give you what you are expecting that is a score more than a 75 plus for your paper 1 and it will help you to crack your examination for this we also have brought a complete course for paper 1 which consists of daily live lectures full syllabus notes 60 plus mock test apart from that we have a daily uh, sorry weekly mock test on every saturdays consisting of the uh, unit which we are doing so th this week we are doing the unit as people development and environment so you will be getting the mock test on people development and environment and then 2000 plus uh, mcqs as a form of question bank this is all available at a fee cost of rupees 3600 with a 20% off and you can download this with the help of global online app with the help of google play store this is how the interface looks once you download you have to register yourself by the mobile number you can get an access to the course once you buy the course which will be having the content in the form of the folders by various faculty members units in the form of theory classes evaluation test notes mock test and mcqs lecture the contact details are given below you can get in touch with us with respect to the given course and start your preparation now yes without wasting time as we have practicing based on you know the time uh, time uh, specific time uh, and agenda with respect to what with respect to the time uh, form so now we will be Uh, starting with our question answers making sure that you know every one of you have to ensure that you are doing it little bit faster so that your practice of answering the question as per the time is uh, you know in in kept in mind and you are doing that very well so yes we'll start sorry i've just you know just questions yes so we'll be starting with the 115th question we have done some questions yesterday but yesterday sorry that you know in between because of technical error the class was ended bit early and don't worry as i said from sunday onwards this marathons i'll help you to uh, develop the marathons and practice yourself very well okay so yes let's come with the first um, question for the day the question is a 115th question a natural phenomena that becomes harmful due to pollution a natural phenomena that becomes harmful due to pollution is called as what global warming ec ecological balance greenhouse or desertification a natural phenomena because of which the uh, you know a natural phenomena that becomes harmful due to pollution so you have to answer you know what exactly uh the phenomena is called as or what exactly the phenomena is known as those students who have joined the class yes very good evening to everyone quickly start answering we have to make sure that we have taken you know whatever number of questions we have to practice it with the reference to what with the reference to time limit from your final examinations right okay everyone uh, so yes I hope everyone is making sure that you are you know answering the questions with respect to what with respect to the given uh, question okay so let's start yes okay so yes the natural phenomena that becomes harmful due to pollution is something called as greenhouse effect okay we have done this in the theory class also as i told without theory class if you are coming for the sessions it becomes little difficult but then it's okay at least now you can make sure that you are learning properly and practicing yourself very well right okay the pollutant responsible for ozone holes so we are talking about the pollutant which is responsible for ozone holes that is so2 co cfc co2 
now we are we know that ozone you know the question on ozone is very again uh, important and it is appearing in some or other form so you should be knowing this questions very well so when we talk about the pollutant a pollutant which is responsible for co2 uh, sorry the pollutant which is responsible for ozone holes is what the options given are so2 co co2 and cfc so yes everyone uh, given little bit of time to you make sure that you have started yes okay 115th question i have got question number 116th everyone i hope uh, everything is very clear you can hear me clearly you can see the questions clearly okay so yes very good 116th question is cfc that is chlorofluorocarbons great okay yes now so let's start with the next question so question number 117 uh, the best solution so they are asking you that the best solution to get rid of non biodegradable waste so if you want to get rid of non biodegradable waste which is the best solution either burning is the best solution dumping is the best solution burying is the best solution or recycling so if you want to get rid of if you want to get you know uh, free of non biodegradable waste then what you have to do what is important to do or what is the solution so for solution you have an options that is burning dumping burying or recycling so yes so which is the best option in order to treat non biodegradable waste yes i am waiting for the answers as i said i'll be giving you the uh, time limit just to make sure you are practicing very well very good yes jagruti uh, yes very correct that is recycling is the best option when you comes when it comes to getting rid of non biodegradable waste okay now coming to yes 118th question animal dung is something which is biodegradable non biodegradable hazardous or toxic so what uh, you know animal dung is something which is respect to biodegradable or which comes under the category of non biodegradable hazardous or toxic so yes now you should know this you know such type of questions again very common example type of questions you get in order to you know solve so it becomes very important that you should know what is the topic about and then you can come to it okay so yes let's see animal dung yeah very good okay answers fine so yes an animal dung the right answer is which comes under which type of this so yes animal dung is but one thing which comes under what which comes under biodegradable so yes option number a is the right answer yes let me see how many of you are uh, have answered on ans 118th yes very good okay so let's move little bit ahead faster which of the following is non biodegradable so they have given you the options you have to answer which of them is non biodegradable animal bones nylon wool or banyan tree leaves so which of them comes under non biodegradable waste so whether it is animal bones whether it is nylon whether it is wool or whether it is banyan tree so out of them you can answer what comes under biodegradable waste okay whether it is animal bones whether it is nylon or whether it is wool or whether it is banyan trees okay yes fine so yes let's see how many of you are able to answer question number 119 you have which of the following is non biodegradable whether it is animal bones whether it is nylon whether it is woolen wool sorry or whether it is banyan tree leaves so yes 119th we have already start getting questions so the one which is non non sorry biodegradable is something called as yes option is option number b nylon very good okay coming to question number 120 so here see they have used certain acronyms also so you should be knowing it very well which of the following non biodegradable waste has the potential of polluting earth to dangerous level of toxicity if not handled properly 
so which of the following non biodegradable waste has the potential of polluting earth to a dangerous level of toxic toxicity if not handled properly so whether it is dtt whether it is cfc whether it is radioactive substances or whether it is pan so which is basically non biodegradable waste has the potential of polluting earth to dangerous level of toxicity if not handled properly okay okay so the one which is non biodegradable has has the potential of polluting earth to a dangerous level of toxicity if it is not handled properly okay so that is called as what it is called as radioactive substances so if radioactive substances are not handled properly okay they will be resulting into what they will resulting into the dangerous level of toxicity uh, and that is nothing but it is called as what it is called as your non uh, sorry it is called as your radioactive substances right okay so yes i hope everyone those who have answered those who are wrong have got the answer but those who are right also knows okay yes very good okay coming to question number 121 which of the following is a non point source of water pollution so when i'm talking when i'm talking about water pollution which comes as the non point source i hope if you know what exactly it means non point source so where we have an example such as called as oil spills we and we have an example called as sewage treatment we have an example called as sorry option called as open cast mine or deep bore well so if anyone doesn't know what is non point source of water pollution it comes you know uh, from certain uh, i mean to say uh, certain sources so non pollutant uh, non point source of pollution okay it's it's some is defined as the sources where it comes from so it can be the cars it can be trucks it can be septic tanks it can be boats it can be uh, bacteria it can be fertilizers so here which of them is a non point source of water pollution so water pollution is because of which source so you have to tell or define the source okay let's see how many of you are able to answer the uh, question so which of them comes as you know the source which is called as a non point source of pollution water pollution so they are asking you to define the non point source of water solution so whether it is oil spill whether it is sewage treatment whether it is open cast mine or whether it is deep bore well okay so yes the one which is a non point source of water pollution is called as oil spills so oil spill for water pollution is a non point source so from there it comes right okay question number 122 122 i have in fact told you in one of the class in this recent class itself so again this should not go wrong okay i i hope 121 is answered and everyone knows the right answer comes let's come to question number 122 bod stands for what so bod is something called as biological oxygen demand or it is called as the basic oxygen uh, dissolved whether it is called as a bi biological organic demand or whether it is called as biological oxygen decomposition so bod so what exactly bod is known for biological oxygen demand basic oxygen demand biological organic demand or biological oxygen decomposition bod stands for what yes everyone so yes see i again yes 122 answer should be very quick in fact everyone should know and we have discussed this very well so yes bod stands for something called as biological oxygen demand so bod is nothing but biological oxygen demand right okay very quick it should be and everyone should be right for this answer there is nothing uh, you know to revise we have done this very well let's come to question number 1 123 
which of the following statement is not a method of purifying water so there are certain methods given okay so in this methods which of the method is not a uh, method for purifying water whether it is reverse osmosis whether it is use uv radiation whether it is distillation or whether it is evaporation from a water body so which stands as a uh, method of uh, it's it's not a method of purifying water so whether it is reverse uh, or oh, sorry osmosis whether it is uv radiation whether it is distillation or whether it is evaporation from the water body so which comes you know as a uh, method of purifying not a method of purifying water yes so everyone those who are uh, done with the reading of the options can quickly answer the question for 123 we are doing the answer number 123 yes very good okay so the one which is not a method of purifying water is uv radiation so with the help of uv radiation we do not purify no you uv jagruti read the question. distillation in fact we distill okay it's one of the method so not a method is something called as uv ra uh, ultraviolet radiation through which we do not do any type of <laughs> purifying okay coming yes now coming to question number 124 which of the following statement is not true with respect to normal plastic waste so it's last too long it clogs the sewage system it is biodegradable burning results into toxic fumes so which of the following statement is true is sorry which of the following statement is not true when it comes to normal plastic waste it lasts too long it clogs the sewage system it is biodegradable or whether it is results burning results in toxic fumes yes students those who have joined bit late no problem but make sure that you are reading the questions and answering answer a little bit you know faster so that you get a practice of your final uh, examination mock test like fine so yes a which of the statements so the statement which is not true with respect to normal plastic waste it is something called as what it is it is the statement is it is biodegradable so something you know the statement known as it is biodegradable is not true when it is with respect to normal plastic waste right okay coming to question number 125 acid rain is formed by the so acid rain is formed by what combination of chemical air pollutants with atmospheric water droplets mixing of acid with rain release of industrial pollutions in the atmosphere or none of the above so which of the following okay acid rain is formed by so combination of chemical mixing of acid rain release of industrial pollutants or none of the above so let's see which of the following is acid rain is formed by what okay so you have to answer the question it is formed by combination of chemical that is pollutants mixing or release or you know none of the above so the one which is formed by okay it's basically the combination As acid rain is formed by the combination of air pollutants with the atmospheric water droplets so this is how the acid rains are formed okay this is how the acid rains are uh, formed or it is yes very good many of you have answered rightly fine next question 126 which of the following is not an impact of acid rain so they are asking you this the given option is not an impact of acid rain whether it is death trees tre uh, sorry death of trees whether it is loss of productivity of plants whether it is salt alkalinity or death of a fish in lakes and ponds you want to identify not the impact because of this there is no impact of acid there is no impact due to acid rain okay reading of the question is very important reading correctly and uh, understanding the keyword is also equally important 
so the one which is not a impact of a acid rain yes is from the options from the given options the one which is not an impact of acid rain i have yet not got the answers anyone so just be quicker faster so the one which is not an impact of acid rain is basically the soil alkinity okay soil alkinity is something which is not a form of what which is not a form of acid rain right okay now coming to question number 127 127 is in a lake polluted with pesticides which of the following will contain the maximum amount of pesticides as a result of biomagnification okay yes we are into question number 127 in a lake polluted with pesticides which of the following will contain the maximum amount of pesticides as a result of biomagnification so small fish microscopic animals big fish or water birds so which of them is you know a result of biomagnification all this we have done in our theory classes see now it's high time for you because your focus will be on main on mcqs theory classes please on the channel you can visit and revise once and come back to the mcqs so yes one which is you know uh, in a lake which pesticides which of the following will contain the maximum amount as a result of biomagnification so the one which will contain uh, which will be with maximum uh, magnification will be big fish so big fish in lakes okay is something you know it's a result of what it's a result of biomagnification so option number c question number 127 the right answer is option number c yes very good now coming to question number 128 sorry uh 128 which of the following is most dangerous and long lasting so they have given certain you know certain uh, options you have to define that from this following which of the one will be dangerous and long lasting nuclear waste volcano ash mining waste or biomedical waste so from the one which is most dangerous and long lasting which is you know the one which is resulting uh, most dangerous and long lasting whether it is nuclear waste whether it is volcano ash whether it is mining waste or whether it is biomedical waste so yes the one which is long lasting and the one which is dangerous is something called as yes very true everyone those who have answered it it is something in the form of what nuclear waste is which which is which can be more impactful yes uh, a one very good yes i've got the answers a which is long lasting as well as dangerous right okay question number 50 uh, sorry question number 129 now name the substance you have to tell the substance again which is based on acronyms uh the uh, whose accumulations in pelicans of lake michigan michigan sorry led the formation of thin shells of their eggs okay so which of the substance has resulted into accumulation in pelicans of uh, lake michigan which has led in the formation of thin shells of their eggs so which is that okay so anyone who is you know uh, pelicans is basically the birds okay large bird which lives near the water bodies and they has you know the large beaks okay which is used basically for holding the fish so which uh, the substance which resulted into accumulation of pelicans of lake michigan led to the formation of thin shells of their eggs okay is is nothing but yes in case if you have heard this and you know it it's very good but if not so this is basically the substance that is called as ddt now as i said it is acronym so you should be knowing about this very well uh, in case if not then it becomes little bit difficult okay so ddt basically it is you know in it is an insecticide that is called as diclodifen uh, uh triothalin it's it's an insecticide i mean substance you know with an insect synthesis insecticide and that is what was found uh, as a substance in the accumulation in pelicans at lake michigan right 
okay and this substance you should know in case little bit of uh, knowledge i will give you this is a non biodegradable substance and it is basically acting as you know pollution polluting the harm pollutes as a pollutant which harms the org uh, organisms and it is banned you know in uh, in india it is not permitted it is banned uh, spraying of this in the field you know is it's not allowed so you should be knowing this very well uh, i hope it's very clear and why it is banned that also you should know with a specific reason coming to the next question i hope everyone is with me uh yes let's go to question number 129 i didn't get any answers okay fine yes coming to question number 130 the process in which a harmful chemical enters the food chain and gets concentrated at each level in the food chain so when we talk about the process in which the harmful chemical enters the food chain and gets concentrated at each level in the food chain so whether it is concentration biomagnification expansion or pollution which is that substance called as okay a substance which enters okay uh, which is harmful which enters the food chain uh, so that substance is called as what question number 130 what is that specific substance known as so yes the substance is known as the substance is called as biomagnification the substance is known as biomagnification right okay coming to question number 132 i see i hope everyone i'm giving lot of time at least which is needed for from examination point of view so still i want you to increase your speed with so that you can you know come with a, a proper time set for your final examination combustion of most fuels releases in what so if we uh, if we you know if there is a combustion of the fuels it releases co2 so2 no2 or o2 what does it releases okay yes 130th question very well so combustion combustion of most fuels releases what what type of release it, it is okay so the release is basically with respect to what okay yes so combustion of most fuel releases yes uh, it releases co2 that is nothing but it is called as carbon dioxide it is something it releases in the form of co2 right okay let's see little bit answers are coming bit late but i still hope many of you are still right with the answers so keep it up okay coming to question number 132 the use of which of the following fuel can help in reduction of air pollution so when we talk about you know the use of following fuel which helps in the reduction of air pollution is it petrol is it diesel diesel sorry is it cng c or it cng and that's none of the above so which of the following fuel can be uh, can help in reduction of air pollution so which fuel can result okay jagruti has already answered uh, let's see uh, just see others yes very good cng is the one which a reduction okay in the same can help in reduction of air pollution right okay everyone of knows everyone of you knows the various certain states okay in india are facing lot of problem uh, with specific Uh, with the air quality pollution rate so yes you should be little bit aware of this also can be a part of question we can do it in current affairs later right question number 133 now which of the following organisms is the main indicator of sulfur dioxide pollution so which organism indicates uh, the uh, which of the following organisms is the main indicator of sulfur dioxide pollution blue green algae lichens e coli or none of the above so which of them has you know it's indicating the main indicator of sulfur dioxide so from the given options which indicates the indicator of sulfur dioxide yes
Yes, one thirty-three. Very good. Lichens. I have given enough time for everyone. Yes, one thirty-three. Lichens is the answer, which is the main indicator of sulfur dioxide, right? Okay. Coming to question number one thirty-four. Petrol engines release gaseous uh, oxides of what? So when we talk about petrol engines. they release gaseous oxides it is called as sulfur nitrogen phosphorus or carbon so petrol engines release gaseous oxides of what either it is sulfur either it is nitrogen either it is phosphorus or either either it is carbon so it releases what yes everyone Okay, so let's see. Petrol engines release gaseous oxides of. Okay, answers are ready. Great, everyone. So yes, oxides of very good nitrogen. Yes, the right answer here is nitrogen. Okay, coming to question number one thirty five. uh they have covered see they are covered under the stockholm convention the toxic is known as agent orange it was sprayed by us forces during vietnam war to destroy the forest cover so which is that chemical dioxin abstos uh, benzi uh, sorry benzin or it is all the above so the chemical which was used and they have given you the description also where it was used exactly in what situation what is the chemical uh, sorry what is the so toxic substance known as and the another name is also called as agent orange so let's see what this agent orange is all called as yes everyone yes so the agent orange is basically called as dio dioxin dioxin yes the right answer is option number a that is dioxin is the right answer yes okay now coming to the next question question number 136 okay the best extinguisher for inflammable materials so when we talk about the extinguisher the best one which is you which is for inflammable materials is it water so2 co2 or co so which is the best you know uh extinguisher for inflammable materials yes everyone yes so right answer is the best extinguisher for inflammable materials is nothing but it is co2 okay yes so the right answer is co2 great okay coming to question number 137 co2 is stored as a liquid in a cylinder at what so when we call about when we talk about co2 co2 is stored as a liquid in the cylinder in the form of high pressure low pressure high temperature or low temperature so co2 which is stored in a cylinder as a liquid in a cylinder it's basically uh, for what okay yes i hope everyone uh see enough time is given to you but make sure that you people are ha making a habit of answering the questions within yes uh 136 is over 137 now uh, co2 is in the it is store as a liquid uh in a cylinder at at a what rate at uh, sorry at a what given uh following options whether it is high pressure whether it is low pressure whether it is high temperature or whether it is low temperature so yes the one co2 which is stored as a liquid in a cylinder is basically at a high pressure it is stored in the form of what it is stored in the form of high pressure yes coming to question number 138 the best ways to dispose plant waste so if you are disposing the plant waste the best way is what 
burning, uh, composting, dumping in a hilly area or in sorry incineration. So the best way to dispose the plant is burning, composting, dumping, or incineration. Yes. So base, the best way to dispose the plant waste. So just remember what, what waste they are asking you. So the one which is base, best to dispose the plant is composting. Okay. So the answer is composting. Right. Okay. Coming to question number 139. So 139 is about which of the following is not one of the major environment problems resulting from the human interference in the nitrogen cycle. So, which is not one of the major environmental problems. So, they are saying that this is not the age major environmental problem. That is global warming, acid rain, uh, eutrophication, uh, sorry, uh, trophication and ozone depletion. So, the one among them is not the major environmental problem resulting from human interference in nitrogen cycle. So, which is not the uh, right option yes everyone So yes, the one which is not a major environmental problem from the given that is ozone depletion. So this is one which is not one of the major environmental uh, problem, right? Yes, question number 139. Okay, some are right, some are, no, no one is right for 139. Please be careful, 139 is not eutrophication, that is ozone depletion. It's basically ozone depletion, right? Okay, coming to question number 140 now. Which of the following is not a major greenhouse gas? Now, this everyone should be again, you know, knowing it very well. Which is not a major greenhouse gas? Carbon dioxide, water vapor, methane or calcium carbonate. So, one which is not a, a be, it's, it's not a major greenhouse gas. So, the carbon dioxide, water vapor, methane or calcium carbonate. Yes, let's see. One forty, yes, very good. We have started getting answers for one forty. Greenhouse gas. What is not, you know, major? See, please over here, read it very carefully. The question I didn't emphasize on that point, but now I'm emphasizing. It is not a major greenhouse gas. Okay, so carbon dioxide, water vapor, methane, and calcium carbonate. You should know the percentage we have discussed in one of the theory class. So out of this, the one which is not a major greenhouse gas is something that is calcium carbonate. It is calcium carbonate is not a major greenhouse gas. Okay. Yes. Now coming to yes next one. Montreal Protocol which was signed in 1987 was signed for what? To phase out uh, the use of chlorofluorocarbons, reduce the greenhouse gas effect, protect the endangered species or it is ban nuclear testing in tropical areas. So, uh, areas or oceans. So which is not a, okay, Montreal Protocol signed in 1987 is what? Okay, yes. No, Ashwini, no worries. Just make sure that you know this important points you are writing and taking. So yes, the one which was signed uh, basically was for phasing out. I didn't yes, phasing out your 
ozone see chlorofluorocarbons which cause depletion of ozone layer yes okay coming to question number 142 which of the following is not the prime health uh, risks associated with uv radiation due to a uh, depletion of stratospher uh, stratospheric ozone so which is one one of the not prime you know a uh, health risks which is associated with uv radiations so the whether it is increased skin cancer reduced immune system increased liver cancer or damage to eyes so which of them is not the prime health you know reason which is associated with uv radiation so one which is not a prime uh, sorry yes 142 now we are into 142 everyone yes 142 question number 142 the one which is uh, not the prime health uh, risks associated with greater uv radiation that uh, due to the atmospheric uh, sorry depletion of stratospheric ozone question number 142 so that is basically the liver cancer increased liver cancer is not one of the prime reason okay 142 i have not got the answers yet maybe students are thinking yes it is basically due to increased liver cancer no option number c the right answer is option number c please everyone be careful okay now unburnt carbon particles so the carbon particles which are not burnt out which is called as unburnt are what Car uh, cardiac problems they causes what cardiac problems respiratory problems throat problems or skin infection so any unburnt carbon particles can result into or can cause into what the unburnt particles carbon particles can cause or result into which of the following whether it is the cardiac problems respiratory problems the throat problems or skin infection so yes the unburnt carbon particles result into what the results into respiratory problems yes anyone who is right with the answer unburnt carbon particles yes let me check out question number 143 everyone no 143 one or one or two students are right others are wrong be careful these are again the uh, questions which are regularly you know asked in any form right now question number 144 which of the following statements are correct in context of carbon monoxide emissions so when we talk about carbon monoxide emissions it is due to uh, incomplete combustion of fuel evident in petrol engine or long term exposure that can cause nausea so what is the uh, statement with respect to carbon monoxide which is you know correct so they have given you the statements below you have to identify the statements so the statements are incomplete combustion of fuel evident in a petrol engine or long, long term exposure which can cause nausea so whether it is statement number 1 and 2 whether it is 1 2 3 whether it's 2 and 3 or it is 1 and 3 so yes everyone uh, which of the statement is correct with respect to the context of carbon monoxide emissions yes the statement which is correct is basically option number yes let's see how many of you have answered this and how many of you have got it correctly so that is option number one two and three so all the statements are correct it is due to incomplete combustion it is evident in petrol engine it is because of long term exposure which can cause nausea okay now yes question number 145 okay so last question for the day okay according to who the maximum permissible limit of chlorides in drinking water so we have a limit for chlorides to be used in drinking water it is how much 100 mg or per liter or it is 200 600 or 800 so how much chloride is you know uh, according to world health organization what is the permissible limit what limit is permissible yes everyone
yes waiting for everyone's answer to find out what is the permissible limit so the permissible limit of levels of chloride in drinking water is basically 200 mg per liter okay the right answer is 200 mg okay just make sure that everyone uh, as i have already informed that this in coming sunday okay tomorrow you have a practice session tomorrow there will be a mock test okay evening there will be a mock test and coming sunday there will be a marathon revision marathon revision for all uh, major of the questions of people development and environment so we will be taking the topic as people development and environment only and there will be a marathon session so tomorrow there will be a mock test and on sunday there will be a marathon session i'll try to complete you know at least 50 questions will be taking and these 50 questions will help you to really you know cope up faster with the revision and uh, prepare yourself best for your upcoming examination so stay tuned on sat sunday you will be getting the uh, marathon questions so make sure that you are utilizing it uh, from the youtube channel uh, and then studying yourself well at the same time if anyone is looking for paper 2 study material in the notes and mcq form you we do provide that for the following subjects which is listed on the screen for further inquiry if you want with this you can get in touch with us on the given whatsapp number the fees is rupees 1280 with a 20% discount okay thank you everyone have a good night and make and wish you happy diwali to everyone make sure that you know uh your diwali goes with a good amount of resolution for your examination you crack the examination and this is the best gift for everyone so uh, enjoy your diwali at the same time make sure that you have your plans and time to study also okay thank you everyone